Welcome to the Academic Strategies Corner. I am Dr. Keto Myrie, and today we'll be covering how to read a college textbook. Reading is a part of daily life. We read all sorts of things every day. We read di directional signs, social media posts, and other things that pop up on our smartphones like ads. But let's switch over to school. Do you remember reading a textbook in high school? I don't mean a novel or a handout sheet your teacher gave you, but an actual textbook. Well, in college, the chances that you'll have to read your college textbook are about 90%. If you're a full-time student, meaning you have 12 credits, which is about four classes, you will probably end up reading at least in three out of four of those classes. That's a lot of reading. Professors will assign reading to cover the course content, not based on how many classes you have or how much reading each professor gives you in each class. On average, you could end up with 50 to 100 pages of reading for each class prior to the next time that you go to class. Some professors, they'll lecture in the classroom, but they'll still expect you to do your textbook reading. While other professors, they will integrate the reading um, from the textbook into their lecture, you still need to read the book. So let's talk about college textbook reading. The first thing you need to remember is that Reading your college textbook kind of depends on the subject. Now, yes, I know that complicates things because you probably have three or four different subjects for each class, but how you read um, for that particular subject has some nuances to it. But today, we're gonna talk about some general strategies that should make your college textbook reading a little bit easier. The method we're gonna talk about today is called S Q R 3. The S stands for survey. The Q stands for questioning. And then we have three R's. They stand for read, recite, and review. So let's talk about S. S again is for survey. You may be thinking, what does survey mean in regards to reading? Well, survey looks at reading the introduction to the book. And when you read the introduction to your textbook, it will give you the author's way of how they organize that particular textbook which is a lot of good information. So some of the things in the, when you're surveying the book or reading the introduction that you could find, you could find that there's an outline to each chapter. You could find that there are chapter questions. A chapter summary. Uh, pictures, charts, or graphs, depending on what kind of textbook it is. So again, when you're surveying your textbook, usually it involves reading the introduction to the book, which the author again is outlining some of the major components of the chapters in the book. So again, you might they might say that there's an outline to each chapter, there are chapter questions, a chapter summary, pictures, charts, or graphs. 
One of the most important things to do after you survey the textbook, if there is a chapter summary, you want to flip to that chapter summary. Sometimes it can be found at the beginning of a chapter and sometimes it's found at the end of the chapter. Either way, it's really important that you read the chapter summary. The chapter summary will give you context for what the author is going to talk about in the chapter. It also will kind of spur your prior knowledge. So your prior knowledge is, well, what do you already know about what the author is gonna talk about in the chapter? The chapter summary will also begin your brain to thinking about questions. Okay, so I remember certain things from, the, from this particular topic, and this is what the author is telling me that they're gonna cover, but what questions do you have? It also may highlight for you some of the important topics that you will need to take notes on in the chapter. So let's talk about Q. Q again stands for question. Now I just mentioned when you're surveying the chapter that the author may provide questions, usually at the end of the chapter, um, in your textbook. Well, I don't know if you remember this or recall this, but in high school, do you remember the teacher giving you questions and then you actually read to answer the questions? Bingo, this is the same thing. So if there are questions in the back of your chapter, you wanna go to those questions prior to reading the chapter. So, so far we've said if there's a summary of the chapter, read the summary first, that's a part of surveying. And then in your surveying, if you find chapter questions, you wanna read those chapter questions first. Now, why would you do that? Because it's gonna make your reading easier. Because just like you did in high school, you're gonna be looking at those questions and reading for the answers to those questions. The author is helping to pick out the important information in the chapter. So let's write that down. Find the questions at the end of the chapter. and read to answer the questions. Now you may be thinking, what if there are no questions at the end of the chapter? That's a great question. We'll tackle that next. So we're still talking about questions. So the I pose the question, what if there are no questions at the end of a chapter? What do you do? Well, remember in surveying, we were looking at or looking for different things. One of the other things that I think I forgot to mention when you're surveying the chapter that you can look for, you can look at the chapter headings. So there are gonna be major chapter headings and subheadings. Now, if they're not questions at the end of your chapter, what you wanna do is create questions from the chapter headings. So when we think about creating questions, we go to the usual ones. We look at what, why, where, how, and when. Now I'm sure you remember these from probably elementary school. So these are the types of questions you may ask. Now again, if there are questions at the end of your chapter, what you want to notice is what types of questions are they asking. So maybe they're asking mostly why questions or mostly how questions. So how questions look at a process and a why question looks at reasoning. So that's giving you an indication that those are the types of questions that you need to ask when you are going through this chapter and looking at the chapter headings. Again, reading really depends on what topic you are trying to cover. So pay close attention 
to different types of questions that may be asked by the author in your textbook. So again, if there are no chapter questions at the end, you want to create your own questions from the chapter headings and the types of questions you may be looking for or trying to develop are what, why, when, when, where, and how questions. Now we're going to talk about our first R, which is read. You will be reading the chapter, but there's some little nuances there. So what are you reading for? You're reading for the answers to your questions. So remember when we talked about Q, we talked about if there are chapter questions at the end of the chapter, that you need to look at those first before you read, and then you're gonna read to answer those questions. Well, the same thing applies when you create your own questions. You wanna create those questions and then you wanna read to answer your own questions. Now, let's talk a little bit more about this. How do you go about reading to, in order to make your reading a little bit faster? So what you wanna do is the first thing you wanna do is you want to read the first sentence in each paragraph. I'm just gonna abbreviate that. Usually after the first sentence, they will, the author will um, write a fact or give you some important information about that topic. Then you wanna read the last sentence of the paragraph. Now, if we think back to high school in English class, you probably remember that the first sentence in a paragraph is your topic sentence. And so the topic sentence is, of course, telling you what the paragraph is about. Then you follow that topic sentence up with important information, facts about that topic, possibly even examples. Then your last sentence of the paragraph is going to talk about, kind of give you a summary of what the paragraph was about and introduce the next topic or the next uh, point that your author is gonna make in the following paragraph. So if you're reading like this, um, it may cut down on some of the reading that you have to do in the chapter, but it also should allow you to look for those answers um, to your own questions. Our second R is recite. So let's quickly review. We surveyed, we made questions or answered the questions in the back of the book. We read for our answers, now recite. Recite in regards to reading means that you are going to go over your questions and answers. Now how many times in high school do you remember your teacher giving you a sheet to complete. Maybe you read for the answers that were on the question and then you turned in the sheet. Well, in college, you actually need to go over that information. So almost the same process, except the process doesn't end when you finish answering the questions. What you then need to do is recite or go over those questions and answers. Now, it depends on what kind of learning style you have. You might be a visual learner. So maybe you want to look over your questions and answers and organize them in, in terms of uh, the types of questions that you were asking for a particular topic within the chapter. Or if you are um, a person that's hands-on, you may want to put your questions and answers on flashcards so that you're actually doing something when you're reciting. If you're a verbal per person, uh, ver have a verbal learning style, you may want to recite your information by actually saying your question out loud and then saying the answer out loud. The last R that we're gonna talk about in the SQR3 method of reading is review. 
So, in our last hour, we talked about reciting. And that's right after you get done reading for the answers to those questions. Review could come in a little bit later. Now, in college, you don't want to wait to the day before the test to actually start reviewing your information or studying for the test. You want to do it a little bit at a time. So the review part of the SQR3 method is looking at your information possibly every day or every other day to review the questions and answers that you came up with. Another thing that would be really great to do is take those questions and answers into your professor or into a tutor and see if you've covered all of the important information, if you've asked the right questions and found the right answers so that when test time comes, you'll mostly be reviewing those questions and answers instead of trying to reread the entire chapter. Well, that's all I have for you today. Thank you for joining me on the Academic Strategies Corner, and I hope you will practice this method. Thank you.